Hello everyone, welcome back to the How to FPV series where I teach you how to fly a first person view drone in short, easy to digest episodes. So this is episode two where the real fun begins because we're gonna get off the ground and learn how to fly line of sight with our eyeballs. And the reason why we're gonna learn how to fly with our eyeballs before we learn how to fly through the camera is we just wanna learn how to walk before we learn how to run. So looking through the camera can be very discombobulating. It's hard to get used to at first and if you combine that with trying to learn all the controls of the drone, it can just be a little bit too much to learn all at once. So we're going to use our eyeballs, which we are very used to looking through, to learn how to fly the drone. And then once we've mastered that, we'll move on and learn how to fly with the camera on the drone, which is the whole reason why you're watching this series. So a couple of things before we get off the ground. First off are the controls of the drone. So I have my drone here. Here's the camera, so this is the front. You can also tell because I have purple props in the front and then pink props in the back. A great color combination for your drone. So for any aircraft, there are three axes of rotation. There is pitch, which is just nosing down and nosing up. So pitching down is just nosing down like this. Pitching up is nosing up like this. There's roll, which is just banking the quad. So this is rolling left rolling right, and then there is yaw, which is spinning the quad. So this is yawing left and yawing right. And on the transmitter, if you are flying mode two, which is what most FPV pilots use, then your controls are as follows. The left stick up and down is your throttle. So just how fast the propellers spin, how much thrust you're making. Left and right on the throttle stick is yawing left and yawing right. So spinning the quad. On the right stick forward and back is pitching the quad. So forward is pitching forward or nosing down and then back is pitching back or nosing up. And then left and right on the right stick is rolling left and rolling right. The other thing I wanted to briefly discuss is rates, which I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about tuning, but rates is probably the only thing you wanna bother messing with as a beginner. So rates are essentially how sensitive your sticks are. And in this series, I'm using the default Betaflight rates which are less sensitive than my personal rates, but they might be a little bit too sensitive if you're just learning how to move the sticks. So the default beta flight rates have a maximum rotational velocity of 667 degrees per second. So if you were to go full stick for just one second, the quad would make nearly two full revolutions. So kind of sensitive. So I would recommend turning down your base multiplier or your RC rate in beta flight down so that your maximum rotational velocity is closer to maybe around 300 degrees per second. So about as half as sensitive as the defaults. And the only thing we're really trying to accomplish here is being able to control the quad. As you grow as a pilot, you will start tweaking all of these values to get the feel you want out of the sticks. But just for now, we just want to be able to control the quad and fly it. So with that out of the way, let's learn how to fly. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is find a place to fly. And basically you just wanna find a big open field, preferably with a soft surface like grass so that you have plenty of room to make mistakes. And if and when you do crash, you have a soft place for your quad to crash and hopefully you don't have any damage. Now, the first thing we're gonna learn is very straightforward and that is just arming and disarming the quad. So just flipping your arming switch. So it seems stupid but you wanna get really used to flipping this switch because as soon as you get into trouble, you don't want to try to save the quad because that will never end well, especially when you're just starting out. You just want to let the quad fall out of the air because that is going to cause a lot less damage than if you over control the quad, pick up a bunch of speed and then crash at a high throttle value or at a high speed. So you just wanna practice arming and disarming the quad. That way, if something bad happens, you can just disarm the quad and hopefully have no damage. So there you can see, flip the quad over, but I just gave up, I disarmed, and the quad has no damage, and we're just gonna get on with the tutorial. So first thing we're gonna learn after learning how to arm and disarm is how to hover. And this is probably the hardest part of learning how to fly because you basically have to learn all the controls all at once and be very good at controlling the quad immediately. So don't be discouraged if you're crashing a lot. That is par for the course. Just keep at it, keep practicing. 
So what we're gonna do is just have the quad facing away from us, the camera's pointing away from us. That way orientation is really easy because then whichever direction we bank the right stick, the quad is going to bank in that same direction. So we're gonna arm and then advance the throttle until we're off the ground and then we immediately have to start correcting. So use the throttle to maintain your height. Use the left stick, left and right, the yaw to spin the quad, keep the nose pointed away from you, and then use the right stick to bank the quad in whichever direction it needs to go. Now, what you wanna try to do is just get the quad into a steady state where you don't really have to make any big adjustments. And really, you don't wanna make any big adjustments if you can avoid it. So, the way I like to explain it is just nudge the sticks. So just give it a little input, release the stick, give it a little input, release the stick. Just kind of see what the quad does. Instead of basically holding in input for too long and then the quad just starts flying too fast and it can get out of frame and then you can't see what I'm doing. So small little nudges of the sticks, little tiny adjustments. So basically releasing the sticks after you make a little change. So you don't want to over control the quad. And when you first start, you may be like up and down all over the place trying to make all these adjustments. That's totally okay. Just try to get to the point where you can make small adjustments. Try to find that throttle position where the quad wants to stay at the same altitude. And then just make a really tiny adjustment from there to really fine tune it. So once you get it into kind of the same place, it actually becomes a lot easier because then you're just guiding the quad to stay in place instead of trying to control it after, you know, if you're all over the place like this, then it can be a lot harder to get the quad in one place. So that may be a scenario where you just want to give up and disarm. So once we're good at this um, hovering with the nose away from us, then we want to do nose in hovering. So we're going to yaw the quad 180 degrees. And then just do the same exact thing. But now all of your controls on the right stick, all of your banking stuff is going to be reversed and that makes it hard. And this is what makes line of sight hard, is orientation. That's not what you have to deal with when you're flying FPV. But this is a good skill to have. You wanna learn this first, walk before you can run, right? Learn to walk before you can run. So same thing, just small inputs, but now your right stick is reversed. Once you master that, then we're gonna walk the dog, which sounds funny, it looks funny also, as you'll see, but basically you're gonna get behind the quad, keep the nose pointed away from you again, and then just make figure eights. So this is basically, you're basically hovering, but you're starting to get used to turning. So I'm gonna do a right turn here. So you're basically just gonna nudge both sticks to the right, and that's going to turn the quad. And of course you're using the throttle stick to keep it at the same height and using the pitch forward and back on the right stick to keep your speed at a very low speed. So now we do a left turn, we're gonna nudge both the sticks to the left and you have to play with the balance of which stick you're moving more to really dial in your turn. So something you just have to play with. So walking the dog, now we're doing the right turn again both sticks to the right. I'm losing speed, so I gotta nose it forward a little bit. So it's a lot of trying to read the quad and just making really tiny adjustments. As you can see, my sticks really aren't moving much. So once you master that, then you can just try to fly normally. So then you can, you know, basically just do some circles or something practice your turning that way and now your orientation is changing because the nose is you know pointing in different directions all the time so this is what makes line of sight hard like I said is the changing orientation so I'm just basically moving both six to the left a little bit the whole time here to make this left circle and then typically you need to pitch back a little bit because the quad will naturally want to pick up speed when you do a turn so I'm also pitching back a little bit 
and we can do a right turn, same thing, both sticks to the right, and then pitching back a little bit to bring the speed down. And this whole time, you know, maybe waist, head height at most, that way if you do get in the pickle, you're not dropping from a really high distance. If you learn how to fly airplanes, they say basically fly pretty high, um, but with quads, uh, it's better to actually fly low because that way you have less distance to fall. So that's pretty much it. Now you can do, you know, figure eight's line of sight. And if you can do figure eight's line of sight, I'd say that's, that's good enough. You've learned all you need to know flying line of sight. Both sticks left for the left turn and pitching back to control the speed. Both sticks right for the right turn, pitching back to control speed. All right, so that's pretty much it. You come in for the landing. Um, pretty much the best idea is to just disarm before you hit the ground. So I'm just gonna put it here and then flip the switch. And that will give you the least violent landing. All right, that is it for this episode of How to FPV. In the next episode, we are going to learn how to fly actual first person view looking through the camera, which is the whole reason why you're watching this series. So that's gonna be really exciting. I hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this video or learned something from it, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you got value out of this video or you're using an ad blocker, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Link to the Patreon and my Discord and Instagram page are down in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.